Hello everyone and welcome to our Performing Arts and Creative Media Production Q&A. Um, we hope you've enjoyed the resources that you've seen so far and we've got some of our lecturers here today to answer your questions. So I'm going to hand over to Peter who will just give you a quick introduction um, and then the rest of the staff will introduce themselves too. Hi, so my name's Peter and I'm the course tutor for acting at Brooks and Melton College. Um, my name is Rachel. I'm the course tutor for musical theatre um, at the college and I'm also the singing teacher that I teach across all the courses. Hi. Hi, um, I'm Jade and I teach on the dance course and our performing arts degree. Hi, um, I'm Steve and I am the level three uh, tutor for both the first and second year creative media courses. Great, thank you. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, we've got a QA and a box that you can pop all your questions in this evening for our tutors. Um, but just to start, uh, maybe we can just introduce maybe each area, um, the kind of thing you get up to on the course um and that kind of thing just while we wait for some questions to come in so i'll hand you over back to peter we'll, we can cycle around again okay so on the acting course at bmc we try to cover a sort of a wide range of different acting styles so that people are sort of fully prepared either for the industry or in something else related to acting that they might go into for example teaching so um, things that we cover is we start with naturalistic and realistic acting. We look at physical theatre, classical theatre, including Shakespeare. Um, and then sort of the other extreme, we also look at pantomime and children's theatre. So when you're studying acting here, you really study a sort of a full range of different types and styles of acting. So you're, so you're fully prepared really for any type of acting. Um, other things that we cover include screen acting and radio acting, so audio voice acting. Um, at the moment, the students are working on an audio book project, for example, where they're just focusing on their use of voice in recording. Um, does someone else want to tell them about their course? We do it in the same order then. OK, so on the musical theatre course, um, Obviously, we're looking at the triple threat scenario. So you do an equal amount of dance, acting and musical theatre slash singing. Um, to kind of sum it up within your first year, we look at ballet, contemporary, jazz and tap. Um, and then we always do an acting project alongside the singing and the dance element. So we look at physical theatre, naturalism and obviously running along the whole uh, course is um, a big focus on developing your vocal technique. So the first year is lots about development across those three areas. Uh, and then as we progress into the second year, uh, well, first of all, at the end of the first year, each term, sorry, each term builds up to a project that usually combines all the three disciplines, dance, acting and musical theatre. And then at the end of the year, we have what we call an FMP, which is for musical theatre, a full scale musical in our theatre. And then as we progress into year two, it's much more about progression, getting ready for HE courses, whether it's stage school, universities, or as Peter so eloquently put, you know, anything that may be um, connected to the industry. So maybe even a teaching uh, degree. Um, so we do lots of solo singing, uh, monologues, contemporary and classical. As Pete says, the actors and MT join up together to do a, a full scale mm -hmm. panto. And then you have another uh, full scale musical at the end of your second year. In terms of dance, we look at commercial. It's a, it's a wide ranging um, air, uh, course across the three disciplines. So lots to do. Mm. And in terms of dance, obviously it, it sort of follows the same model. Um, we really, um, we really love the diversity of the course that we offer and the amount of styles that we do. So um, we'll do contemporary, we'll do ballet, we'll do tap, we'll do jazz, we'll do sort of musical theatre, we'll do more commercial styles of dance, we'll do sort of hip hop and music videos. 
Um, and yeah, alongside all of that, there's the sort of theoretical elements, the research, the planning, um, the production roles, um, and everything's assessed via performance. Um, so at the end of each term, you will do some sort of big performance, whether it be in the theatre, whether it be a site specific piece, whether it be a music video. So we actually dance into camera and working with our brilliant media department. Um, and then obviously at the end of the first year, we do a big theatrical production. It's normally a big sort of dance narrative piece. Um, so in the past, we've done things like um, Edward Scissorhands, we've done um, Snow White, um, so kind of big production value pieces. Um, and then again, the second year, it's just a progression of that. So developing the styles, the te technical um, uh, difficulty um, before again, we move on to the big final major project at the end. Yes. OK, and um, yeah, so for level three um, creative media, we do a range of different um, projects. We do focus on kind of um, film as really kind of the core element of the course, but there's um, there's some really interesting different projects you'll get to do. So you'll get to do documentary production, um, also music video, which, as Jay mentioned, we work with maybe some of the dancing students um, in regards to that. Um, Pete has obviously said that we touch on working with the acting students for short film, too. Um, we also do elements of sound design um, and as you kind of move through to the end of the second year, you do your um, extended project. So you kind of get to touch on lots of different areas of the industry. Um, one project as well in second year is either a TV advert or a promotional video. So if you're interested in doing kind of um, corporate or promotional videos, um, yeah, a range of different products that look into different areas and then you get to choose to specialise in whatever you want for your kind of final project. Um, so you pick up a nice big array of skills so that whatever you want to do after college in terms of work or university, you've got a range of projects on your showreel to show off your skills. Lovely, thank you. We've got quite a few questions that have come in, so let's start with um, someone's asked about the dance um, workshop element of the um, audition as there, sorry, of the audition. So when they're applying, um, can you just go through sort of how we're doing that now and what to expect and what you expect from the students? Um, so, yeah, obviously, um, with the COVID lockdown at the moment, it is making things more difficult. So as with all the auditions, what we want to see is potential um, and everybody willing to give give things a go. So um, in terms of a video, um, showing us your skills is, is what we want to see. So um, have you got footage of you dancing at competition or as part of um, a, a wider sort of musical theatre show? Um, can you can you provide us with little snippets or a little um, solo that you've put together and can manage at home? So we, are, we, we know that it's difficult, but what is it that you can showcase to us your potential in maybe a few different dance styles? Because obviously that's what we cover at college. Um, and in terms of the workshop, um, when we have enough people, we might try and do a sort of Zoom live um, class for you so that you get a feel for actually sort of picking up material, learning, replicating and, and how we work as a department. So that would be a sort of workshop element actually doing it on screen for us. Fantastic, thank you. Um, I hope that answers your questions. But if not, do feel free to um, ask for clarification in the Q&A box. Um, so another question, what is the average class size for performing arts? Um, it's varied. I mean, sometimes we have a class that may be 22 and then another year it might be 15 or 10 or even less. It really is. We don't like to have more. We wouldn't take more than, say, 24, 25 a class in terms of space. Um, so it's very, very varied. But ultimately, because we don't like and emphasize big class sizes, people tend to get lost. So we are with a small college and having smaller groups, we're able to give that individual care that I think is essential, particularly at that age group, your age group. You just come from school. You know, you want this as, a, as maybe potentially as a new as a career move for you. So 
to get the detailed individual feedback with smaller groups works brilliantly. So it varies, but we don't like to, we, we never go towards, let's get as many people in the room as we can. Lovely, thank you. Um, while we've got you, uh, Rachel, someone's asked about, we've got a lot of questions about um, the audition process. So someone's asked specifically, what um, would you be expecting for a musical theatre um, video audition? Yeah, OK, so um, if you apply for the college, you'll get an audition pack come through. And what happens is you have to um, perform a monologue and you get your text for the monologue within the audition pack. Um, then uh, essentially you have to sing um, a musical theatre solo song. So meaning a song from a musical. Um, and and at the moment, that is it. I mean, moving forward with COVID, there may be additional um, dance requirements to make up for the, the uh, um, us not being able to do a workshop, a dance workshop. But at the moment, it's the two requirements that, um, you know, are the essential element to the application. And again, it's the emphasis on um, potential not on the finished product, you know, it's it's just having a go, showing where you're at right now um, and we take it from there really. Lovely, thank you. Um, Peter, do you just want to touch on um, the acting? Would it be quite similar with the monologue style? Um, yes, um, so with the acting, it's similar to MT, but to musical theatre, but we obviously don't need the singing element. So the audition process for acting normally sort of for COVID, um, we would get people in for a drama workshop and then they would deliver a monologue and we send out the monologues. We send out to everyone a male and female monologue, which then they prepare. So you don't have to select a monologue for it. We send it to you. So you then do the workshop and then we watch your audition piece. Um, at the moment, of course, because of COVID, um, people are sending in video auditions which is working quite well so we're watching those to make the decision and it's the same as Rachel said that at this sort of level we're looking for potential in the audition so it doesn't have to be the absolute perfect audition but it's, it's seeing people's potential as a performer coming through something that we can then build on during the course. Great thank you um Steve we've had a question um kind of similar um for uh, the media level three, is there an entrance assessment of any kind? Um, and maybe we could just talk through the entry requirements or what GCSEs would be good to have as well. Yeah, sure. So um, there's not a formal kind of um, entrance assessment, maybe in, in the same ways as um, as acting um, or musical theatre. But um, in terms of grades five, fours um, or above or five grade C's or above, if you're going off the old system um, is what's required. But we still like um, when you come for um, for interview or even if we're um, kind of getting in touch with you remotely regarding in, uh, remote interviews at the moment, um, not with COVID, um, to get an understanding of what experience you've had. Because we have students that join the course that have had more like photography experience from GC GCSE say, um, but it's more based on still image and they're kind of interested in going into film from that. Some students have made um, blogs or um, a kind of, they've kind of done video work on their um, their IGCSE media, so they've had kind of previous experience. Um, and sometimes we even get students that are interested in animation or they've done stuff um, on Blender. They've kind of had more of a, an IT background. Um, and those are all really viable skills for the course, because as I've mentioned, you get to kind of choose your specialism um, for your end of first year and then your end of second year project. So it's good for us to get an understanding of what skills you already have so we can help you build and develop those on the course as well. Um, so there's no formal entrance assessment, but we do like to kind of ask you to showcase your work, send us any links, any video work you've produced um, or any um, any kind of um, still image uh, photography work that you've done before. Perfect, thank you very much. Uh, we've had another question. Oh, um, for you again, Steve, um, what jobs can students do sort of after their media course? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, there's kind of a range of um, different avenues into different sections of the industry um, that you might choose to follow. Um, in terms of the TV industry, it might be um, working within a TV studio. 
either um, on camera or working as um, Aston. So there's the sound designers department and, and sound as a department, there's lighting as well. Um, it might be that most of, the, most of our students, as I said, the kind of core of the course is focused on film. So a lot of our students look at um, entering the film industry, um, either through university um, or potentially kind of setting up their own freelance um, uh, video production businesses. Um, at the moment, some of uh, a few of my students have been interested in kind of doing drone uh, videography um, as kind of something that they want to look into in future um, as kind of a freelance um, freelance business uh, uh, or the potential of being a freelance business. Um, and in terms of um, other avenues, one of my students is looking at doing fashion media at university, so she wants to kind of pursue that as a career. Some students um, are more interested in even in things like script writing or journalism um, that they can kind of move into through, through having done media. Um, and I have one student in my second year that's applying to do photography uh, at university and wants to kind of pursue a career as a photographer. So, um, yeah, there's a broad range of careers available. Um, and even if university isn't the right option for you, um, there's also um, a range of um, kind of jobs in like marketing or, um, or advertising that you might be pursuing straight off the back of college that media can be a good course to help you get into. Great, thank you. Uh, had a few more questions. Let's see. Um, oh, continuing with the same kind of theme. Um, someone's asked about different jobs um, after performing arts. So I um, don't know who wants to take that. Or maybe we can talk about jobs that students have gone on to do in the past. I think it would depend um, on what what course um, people were on maybe in the first place. So obviously you would choose to do either a level three in musical theatre, dance or acting. Um, and yet yeah, your career path would normally be um, tailored towards that um, subject specialism afterwards. So within dance, we are very proud of our alumni. They've gone off maybe work in holiday parks, um, gone on to kind of be apprentices in dance companies, maybe gone on to teaching. Um, a lot of them go off to higher education, so maybe to a conservatoire, a stage school, a university to do kind of additional training. Um, but yeah, it, it very much depends on their area of um, specialism and their skill set. Um, it might be that actually once they've done their level three, they've really enjoyed their course, but they've actually gone on to do something slightly different, maybe like movement therapy, physiotherapy, maybe some fitness. Um, so, yeah, it allows you, it gives you the grounding to then go and pursue whatever career you want to after that. Lovely, thank you. Does anyone else have anything to add to that or shall I move on to the next question? I, I just like, yeah, the same. It's because we teach us a diverse range of skills and it's all about the development of the person as well, going back to that individual um, attention that people get, that they can tailor make the course and you have an ongoing dialogue with the students on a one to one basis throughout their time at the college. So it really, it really is like a journey for them. Um, and like Jay said, some people decide not to do actual performing arts in general. But I think it's a lot about confidence building as well and the confidence we install in people by the end of the time they've been with us they almost feel they can they can achieve and, and sort of like wherever they want to go to um i mean like as they said we've had you know there's people that have gone lucky enough to get onto the west end there's lots of people on cruise ships you know professional singers we've got um one girl that used to be at college uh Few, few years ago she's now like the manager of women in rock and they're touring all over Europe you know it's it's vast and I think what's really important to sort of say on an evening like today is that any student that's been at BMC they always come back and they always want to share with the new students that are at the college if they're free to come in and sort of like share their knowledge and experience with the students because they value the tutors and the experience they've had at BMC so much that they then give back to the lecturers and you know share their experiences in the industry but also to uh, confirm to the students the, the the core grounding that they'll they'll get from the range of specialist staff um at brooksby melton college yeah and i would just wanted to add a bit to that as well i'm um, just agreeing with everything that 
Rachel and Jade are saying, but also the qualifications of vocational qualification. So the things we look at, it's all geared to thinking about employability as well in the industry. So that's why we cover such a, in acting, we cover such a range of skills. So Shakespeare is sort of a common thing which is performed. So that's why we do some Shakespeare. We do screen acting, radio acting. Um, we do contemporary theatre. So we do sort of target what we teach to what can lead to employment. Um, students will go on to drama schools and universities. And we do have some even who do go straight into the industry as well. Lovely, thank you. Building on that, actually, someone has asked, um, do you do um, specific preparation for drama school auditions um, as part of the course, maybe as an enrichment activity? Yeah, so we um, in the second year, there's a module which is all about um, progression. So in that they look at doing auditions. So in the acting, they look at acting auditions and also a singing audition as well, because an, as an actor, you do need to be able to sing to some degree because it's often in a lot of plays. So, yeah, there's a whole unit in the second year about preparing for drama school or employment or a university place. So, yes, we, we cover that quite well. Lovely, thank you. Sorry, we've had another yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, carry on, Rachel. <laughs> no, I was just going to say within that unit, we do UCAS applications, personal statements, references. So you really are the full package with tutor support, not only from the course tutor, um, personal tutor at college. Um, we have um, a lady who's in charge of UCAS. So it really is like a, a work in progress that the students have a lot of resources to draw upon in completing their UCAS applications. And again, going back to the one to one support, knowing what grades they need to get, making them aware of what grades university slash state schools require, so knowing just how hard they need to work if they want to get into a specific place of their choice. I think that's really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, just again, following on from that, someone's asked, um, are students able to apply for like auditions whilst they are studying? Like, um, would you recommend that or um, is that something that students tend to do? Um, Shall I answer that? Yeah, go for it, Peter. Yeah. So as in applying for work, well, they're actually on the course, I'm guessing that means. Yeah. So um, we we can create space for some types of work like that. So it is good for them to start thinking about the industry. Um, and there is, you know, where we can be flexible if they did get some sort of work, we would try to be because we see the value of um, professional experience. Um, so yes, we would we would do our best to facilitate that if that came up. Yeah. Lovely, thank you very much. Um, right, probably only got time for one more question. Um, so someone's asked what an average day would look like at the college. So maybe we could go through um, all the different areas and just explain what an average day might look like or what it might look like um, in each term. OK, so um, in acting then with the course, it's very practically focused. So although that there is written work, the majority of your day and week will be doing practical classes and usually you'll cover um, probably two different styles or more in a term. So um, to give you that variety, so for example, the first years, First year actors look at realistic and naturalistic acting to start with, but alongside it, they're doing physical theatre as well. Um, so we're very lucky we've got really good studio spaces. So when you're in at Brooks and Melton College, there's lots of good spaces to use, really well equipped studios. And of course, we've got the Melton Theatre. So some of your sessions will be in the professional venue of the Melton Theatre itself. Um, in your there's free periods as well well they're not free periods they're independent study periods so when you're not rehearsing or in classes with a member of staff you will either be doing sort of additional research or you might be meeting up with somebody else in the group that you're working with and doing sort of additional rehearsals so we keep you very busy both with the practical work particularly but also with additional tasks so you have quite a full-on day lots of fun of all the practical work. 
Perfect. Uh, so do you want, do you want, in, are we all doing it? Do you want to? OK, really quick then in terms of MT. Obviously, you've got the uh, triple threat thread throughout. So it's an equal spread of dance, acting and singing. So whatever course we're on, sorry, whatever project we're on is equally spread. So three full days. Um, I think it says practical mixed with theory, but I think the most important thing again to start say is the theory is completely is implemented within the practical. So you do the theory and learn all about the through practitioners and style, uh, historical context, social cultural references, and then learning about that helps you develop as a performer ultimately. Three full days, very varied for MT across dance, acting and singing. Yeah, lovely. Uh, Jay, do you want to cover that? Yeah, so again, um, depending on which term you're in, um, we'll concentrate on um, a particular, couple of particular styles. So in the first term, you'll probably be studying ballet and contemporary. It's a quite a classical project to start off with. Um, so you'll have technique classes, you'll have rehearsals where we'll learn choreography, put it together as an ensemble. Um, there'll also be sessions where you might watch some pieces, do some choreography tasks. Um, and again, when you're not in sessions, we're expecting kind of rehearsal time, research, um, collaborating with others. Um, we say three days a week, but most of our students are in more than that. Um, and sort of COVID has made things difficult, but there's normally lots of collaborations, again, as working with media, making films, um, as doing enrichment projects. Um, so it's as much as you want to get involved as well, really. So there, is, there are set um, timetabled sessions during the week, but then there's other times when we're expecting you to learn, develop, shape material um, outside of that too. Um, and just a quick one, obviously we've been talking a lot about the level three um, courses that we offer today and just that we do offer a BA in performing arts too. Um, we have a lot of students that progress from our level three onto our BA in performing arts because it's a really sort of diverse training. Um, again, lots and lots of performance opportunities, lots of kind of practical um, lessons, um, film work, um, independent projects. So there's lots of sort of freedom to kind of take on um, areas of specialism, whether you want to direct, write, um, collaborate with other people, devise work. Um, and our big kind of performance project selling point for our degree, we think, is working with a professional company in the third year. Um, so if anybody wanted to know a little bit more about our performing arts degree, um, please do get in touch or see our website. Sorry, Steve. That's all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll finish off quick. Um, so for media, it depends on what stage of your project you're at. Um, usually our students will start off by looking at examples and then planning, scripting, storyboarding, coming up with their ideas. Um, that involves obviously a lot of um, a lot of paperwork and the kind of planning stage. Then they get filming. They might be in a green screen studio. They might be in our, um, our sound room audio recording. They might be out at a certain location on site with camera kit um, and sound kit. Um, like Jade said, around the kind of timetabled sessions, we always have students um, trying to book out rooms on their days off as well to come in to get acting students or dance students free to, um, to star in their productions. Um, and then once they finish with their filming stage, which is very hands on, they're then in the editing suites on the Macs, um, trying to get their edits completed and in post production. So we do a range of different projects and they always go from that kind of planning to filming to editing stage. Um, so, yeah, it's a nice varied course. Lovely, thank you. Um, so it looks like we've run out of time for today, but if you have any further questions, please do feel free to drop us an email. Um, all of our details are on the uh, performing arts and media pages um, that you would have found this Q&A on. Um, so yeah, um, again, if you want to apply, please do that through the website and um, we are taking applications currently for September. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Thank you.